Thank you for having me. So today we'll be speaking about challenges in the natural language processing of cuneiform inscriptions and some possible solutions to advanced methodologies in digital Assyriology. I will be discussing these topics from the point of view of the Cuneiform Digital Library Initiative, or CDLI. Assyriology is the study of texts and history of Mesopotamia, ancient Iraq, uh, and neighboring regions. Its ancient inhabitants wrote on clay tablets from accounts to epics in multiple languages and for more than three millennia. There are approximately 500 to 600 thousands of such inscribed artifacts distributed in collections around the world. Digital Assyriology has had an early beginning with thematic or period-centric databases being put together as early as the end of the 60s. With the democratization of the internet, some of these databases, such as the CDLI, extended their offer to the web. That's what it looks like today. Database projects were generally thought as a research tool to assist scholars in producing paper publications. Because of this tradition, but keeping in mind that there are some exceptions, uh, most projects are only barely starting to comply thoughtfully to open access principles. Online publications are thought as an extension of paper publications and limit access to the data that make them live, either by using restrictive licenses and or by leaving important technical barriers to access the data. For instance, in some cases, a scraper is required to extract information from a project. Um, this, means, uh, this means that acquiring the data for natural language processing experiments can be challenging depending on which text you're interested in. But then there's some recent happy developments. Uh, for instance, ORAC now offers uh, multiple JSON dumps, and the CDI also recently started offering its catalog dump in a, in a non proprietary format. The CDLI is part of the astrological research landscape, is the most complete database uh, listing these ancient artifacts and hosts an approximate of 320,000 entries. A third of these entries is illustrated generally with a composite image of pictures of all sides of the artifact. Uh, in case of clay tablets, they're called fat process. This is, not, this is an, an envelope, uh, the text is encased into this object. Um, the CDLI also offers uh, services such as a, a search tool, a knowledge wiki, glossaries, and useful downloads. Around 35% of entries have transliterations or transcriptions, if you prefer, um, associated to them, uh, which encode the textual information present uh, on the artifacts. These transliterations are stored using encoding schemes specific to cuneiform languages. There are no shared standards among uh, digital astrology projects. The encoding standards that are most widely used are CDLI APF and ORAC ADF, which are similar. Um, others will, for instance, obey to print imperatives, uh, such as in the case of Ashibab standard, uh, that uses accented characters to represent uh, second and third homophones of uh, the reading of the cuneiform sign, and will only partially number lines. Uh, there are also discrepancies in how much information concerning the structure of the text should be noted, including, for instance, clues um, about the positioning of the text on the artifact and the level of breakage where the inscription should appear. The plurality of encoding standards, in fact, uh, that some of them are geared for print instead of machine readability, and the misalignment of what data, textual and structural, should be encoded are our first barrier to establishing shared natural language processing tools. Uh, note that, that Patrick Burns will be discussing the Python Classical Language Toolkit, toolkit tomorrow. Um, so I uh, just wanted to say that, in my, in, sorry, in my opinion, it would be a great place to centralize such shared tools when they are developed. The current prevalent system for the generation of annotations of cuneiform text is ORAX rule and dictionary-based automated demotizer. Uh, if you have been part of the Global Philology Project from the beginning, you probably heard of ORAX demotizer by its creators. 
Um, Filmadizer creates inline glossing, attributing linguistic information to tokens based on glossary, based on glossaries and manual verification. After an automated processing step, the user can decide to update the annotation associated with the tokens according to their personal analysis. And this process is iterative. Um, ORAC has recently released a new editor to facilitate the addition of ORAC API files and to manage this filmatization process. See on screen, this is the third editor. The limitations of rule and dictionary-based methods are twofold. In the case of large corpora, if the texts are not very homogeneous, the time required to verify each line makes this type of approach impractical. The important need for human involvement is due to the second challenge, contextual disambiguation. ORAC works with, uh, with project-based glossaries that enhance results compared to using a general glossary. But to achieve a reliable and supervised method, context would need to also be restricted to small units, for example, text and line or sentence, if you prefer. Statistical methods are gaining popularity in the field of seriology and are especially used for network analysis, either for prosopographical studies or to understand the correlation between other types of entities. Textual or purpose analysis methods are also being employed for topic analysis and other cluster analyses to understand literary trends or interestingly to ascertain the provenance of texts. These methods are either employed on already limitized corpora or in raw corpora that is manually processed. These approaches necessitate the intensive involvement of the researcher at uh, one stage or another of the process. Identifying the right information requires intelligent discernment, and processing a large number of texts requires extensive time commitment. So to reiterate, even when using more advanced statistical methods, uh, we're still faced with the same limitations with time commitment and to resolve ambiguity. In other words, the data must be refined before applying the algorithms. Machine learning is mostly absent from historical research, but it seems inevitable to consider the integration of such techniques to overcome the current barriers in digital exploration of the language we study. Text uh, uh, tasks such as annotation, translation, information retrieval, uh, this on large corpora of text would benefit from methods that can resolve ambiguities and learn from new input. There's been a resurgence of neural network experiments in the past years. A popular example of the visibility of neural networks is Google's release of, of SyntaxNet built on open source software, TensorFlow. Looking at experiments applied uh, to the English language, uh, English language texts and other languages material, um, statistical machine learning methods and neural network methods show promising results. How can a serologist tackle that sort of advanced technology? Fortunately, uh, colleagues from uh, the computer science, computational linguistics domain um, have an interest in working on, on algorithms to process data from cuneiform texts. The technology is ripe and accessible, and more experiments on ancient and low resource languages show the potential of these types of explorations. To make a significant advance, multidisciplinary research groups need the form. The success of enterprises that will bring a true impact in the current context cannot be achieved by computer specialists or a serologist on their own. University of Toronto, University of California, Los Angeles, and the University of Frankfurt are involved in organizing an international research group of, of digitally, sorry, an international uh, research group of digitally inclined serologists and specialists in computational linguistics from other source languages. Its main objective is the preparation of a methodology for the automated translation and information extraction of Canadian languages. Uh, note that uh, Maria Sukareva from the University of Frankfurt is here today and she can answer your more technical questions if you wish. Um, Sorry. Administrative texts make up the bulk of cuneiform inscriptions we have at our disposal to study ancient Mesopotamian cultures. However, they remain mostly untranslated, making them effectively inaccessible to anyone not having been trained to work with either the Sumerian and Akkadian language um, of a specific time period. Additionally, because of their homogeneity and formulate nature, they are the group of documents on which it would be the most pertinent to apply statistical methods in order to infer information about society and economy. And this type of investigation is still in its infancy, 
and focuses on small corpora that can be entirely processed manually. Pending funding, the Impact uh, International team will prepare a methodology to address those gaps and will experiment on a corpus of 67,000 Sumerian texts dated to the 21st century BC, the Orphan period. This methodology will be reusable and adaptable to other corpora. Only a few experiments have been successfully, successfully conducted on cuneiform languages. It is possible to adapt existing neural and statistical algorithms that are tailored to other languages, uh, for example, neural techniques to disambiguate Turkish morphology and statistical method for uh, Quechua can be reused. Um, for automated translation, both statistical machine translation and neural network-based machine translation will be tested on Sumerian transliteration and compared with results of Basque and Turkish samples. Of course, annotating the corpus is, essential, is an essential step in the methodology in order to compensate for the size of the corpus. Um, these techniques have been proven successful with different languages, including morphologically rich and idiosyllabic languages, just like Sumerians. Um, there are evident ob obstacles to the unsupervised annotation and, and translation of cuneiform texts. For instance, uh, words that have an unknown uncertain meaning will weaken the translation output. But context appraisal will help uh, clarify the meaning of such words. The results of automated translation will not reach the finesse of translations prepared by scholars, of course. Uh, the goal is not to produce beautiful translations, but to create a human readable output that can be used by those outside the field to understand the overall semantics and particularities of the text. Translation will be accompanied by linguistic information, which will provide a supplemental aid to comprehension. Additionally, the CDLI will uh, take the linked, up, uh, the linked open data plunge. Uh, LUD um, will be an integral part of all future research projects at the CDLI. The first step will be linking textual information, uh, integrating the Open Linguistic Annotation Ontology, the OLIA. Uh, with linguistic annotations and semantic information from the text uh, with widely used ontologies such as, for instance, uh, Pleiad for places, Periodo for periods, map dragon for relationship between ancient people. In the second step, metadata will also be aligned, hopefully, with the CDOC uh, CRM in, in collaboration with Mod the Modref French project. We also expect that the lexical data will participate in the Link Open Dictionary project. The goal of the lot integration uh, is to standardize results to permit interoper interoperability with other projects as the most promising method to promote and reuse the aggregation of the CDLI curated data. In order to extend even further the reuse of our work, new algorithms and generated data will be released to the public domain. Along with notions of access and reusability, preservation and sustainability should uh, also be addressed or at one point, there might not be anything left to share. Preservation and sustainability have often been overlooked in early digital projects, but are now recognized as, as an essential part uh, of the project's planning, as demonstrated by the requirements concerning these topics in digital humanities project proposal for different American funding bodies. If the CDLI has been able to try for so long, it's in part due to the involvement of more than a few scholars in the initiative. This is complemented by measures taken to improve the potential longevity of the initiative and the preservation of its data. The CDLI's data bundles have been uh, freely offered for download for a while. Um, the catalog in FileMaker format, but now also in comma separated value format. Textual information, that is uh, transliteration and uh, translation, are also available in text format. All data are currently being pushed nightly to GitHub, and the next uh, and the next iteration of the CDLI software will be versioned throughout uh, future development and maintenance using GitHub. Since its early years, the CDLI has had a mirror site in Berlin, and over the years, has sought to extend its backup and mirroring networks to offer pers persistent service to users and to preserve copies of the data and interface in case of a disaster. Daily backups are running in Berlin at the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science and at the University of, at the University of Oxford. 
There is hope that this network can soon be extended to Canada through uh, Compute Canada, uh, supercomputing and storage service offered to Canadian researchers. In order to give a solid foundation to young research sub, uh, to young research sub projects, the CDLI framework of the project with Phoenix, um, starting in September and funding, um, has the following main objectives. Uh, first is to renew the full code base. So the website will be migrated to the KPHP framework, which is robust, popular, and easy to learn. The automated tasks and more complex scripts will be migrated to Python in a custom library. Documentation will be written throughout the development process. All these steps are important to facilitate maintenance on the long term, including uh, easing the task um, of graduate students in the humanities to code extensions themselves. The human interface will be redesigned to ensure that subsequent research endeavors in the C uh, at the CDLI can rely on a highly usable, accessible, and modulable platform, so new data can be easily analyzed, transformed, shared, and reused. Part of this implies conforming to the WHPC standards and also the Web Continent Accessibility Guidelines. To conclude, um, the quantity of cuneiform text to process coupled with the necessity of time-consuming operations by researchers in processing of cuneiform language um, asks for the development of new methodologies. Using state-of-the-art algorithms for natural language processing um, of languages displaying similarities with cuneiform languages, and by exploiting statistical machine translation and neural network approaches, automated translation of the ancient Mesopotamian lower source language can become an option, and this will open the door to non-specialists to exploit large cuneiform texts, a uh, large, sorry, uh, large corpus texts that uh, are currently mostly untranslated. Thank you, and I welcome your feedback. It really makes me happy to see the next generation here, in your case, graduate student, uh, among others, uh, showing us what's going to, who's going to be doing what for the generations for the decades to come. So yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I, I can say that, you know, personally, one of the nicest things anyone's ever said about me was that they accused me of being a closet cuneiformist, uh, which is I wouldn't, wouldn't lay claim that, but I studied these languages before you were born, right? And uh, it, was, it was pretty archaic. And the reason I worked on Greek and Latin uh, and, and did what I did with Perseus three decades ago was I had been working with Akkadian and Sumerian. And I had had this model that you know everything about your languages and be a master of everything, and you should only work on subjects where you could read everything in sight. Uh, and I had to edit my own texts of uh, Akkadian and Sumerian texts for my dissertation because I was doing, ended up doing some imperative work. Uh, and uh, it was impossible. Uh, it, the field, the logistics of the field were such that it was, you simply couldn't work with it if you were not a specialist. And it was clear that if people were going to take full advantage of, of Akkadian, Sumerian, you would really need a different kind of infrastructure, and I can't tell you how happy it makes me to see the work happening in this field. Uh, I should say, we, global philology really starts with the conversation with Karen Radner, uh, who will professor at, at Ludwig Maximilian University in, in Munich, about how we really need to work together between the seriology and classics and other disciplines. So it's great. Uh, and this is a, a, this CDLI has been going on in for 20 years. So it gets the honor roll of, of projects that have gone on with funding, without funding, when people were crawling on hands with over class with nothing, when they were well supported. Uh, and it is going to face a challenge when Bob, I guess, is going to retire and will be next year. Uh, what do we do? How do we maintain this? Uh, how do we make, maintain any of these projects? Because sooner or later we all retire. And, and more than a tire, uh, you know, a little bit later after that. So, question before we go, go to the table. I have a, just a, a question, quick comment, I guess, more than anything. You talked about in the middle of your, of the presentation about forming the international group of, of cuneiformists that can, that can yep. work together to, uh, um, 
with, and this is, this, it sounds to me very much like what Karen Radner was trying to do with, with ancient Near Eastern in Germany of getting, getting uh, ancient Near Eastern scholars together to, to have a sort of a united front and also to communicate with each other. So it might be interesting to, especially since you have a, already a, some people at the University of Frankfurt, so here in Germany, it might be, a, might be interesting to interface at some level with them as well. So, I, and perhaps you've done that already, I'm not sure. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not having their conversation about this project, uh, but of course we will have to uh, discuss these topics. Further. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 yes. um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, did the, your database include the algorithmic uh, funeral? There's just a couple of texts right now, but uh, there's a French scholar uh, called Vanessa Gelou who is preparing some uh, some edited uh, part of uh, Anatou of Ugarit. Um, but no, the main. Uh, Major texts in the database are mostly Sumerian and Akkadian texts. Any other questions? Uh, thank you very much.